Welcome back to Beauty Gains for episode seven. It's Jess and Curly back for you. So today we are taking back over. We don't have a guest today, but we'll get back to those as, as we continue on. So today we're gonna take kind of a turn for you guys where we've been very, we're gonna stay positive, but a lot of our topics have been more of enlightening and empowering and go for it. We're, we're gonna stay with that, but to do that, we're actually gonna go to more of a, of a serious, Fruit on today's topic. So today we're going to talk about going through different times in your life and, and maybe going through a traumatic experience or, or going through something that seems like it, it's negatively affecting you and, and how am I ever going to come back out of this and kind of our experiences to what we've been through um, and how we kind of got out of, out of that funk from getting kind of knocked down a few bit and kind of having life altering experiences happening and everybody has has different levels. So we talk about like a perspective and perception of different things is maybe something that horrifically happened to me, like yeah, somebody else could go through something that might seem on a higher scale, but in, in your life you're allowed to feel that, okay, this is something that affected me a lot, it almost mm -hmm. changed the course of my life, it changed the person that I am. How am I ever going to come out of this where somebody else could be like, that's nothing to compare to what I do. Yeah. So whether it's a, a divorce, your parents got divorced, somebody that was close to you died, um, somebody got very sick in your family. Like, again, we talk about very extreme things, rape and, and all these different things are all traumatic things that, that people go through that not only does it have a, a kind of a physical effect on you, but your mental health just takes it a complete, just tumble down. Mm -hmm. you know, how am I ever going to get back out of this? Because you're you're in it, you're engulfed in it, and, and you don't see how there could be a light at the end of the tunnel. You don't know how you're ever going get, to get through it and get past it. And we all have those experiences. Again, what, whatever level of the scale it's on in spectrum, we talk about not throwing a pity party and kind of picking yourself back up, but when it initially happens to you and you're going through it, it it's hard to see that you are going to be okay or you are going to move on or that life does move on and it's all up to you. Again, you can have all the support system, but it's, it's really up to you for you to understand that you can change your life back around mm -hmm. and, and you can come back out okay whether it's you needing help from somebody else or maybe you just need time because again a lot of things that I, I've gone through took me time and, and some things I, I'm still not fully over yeah. some things I'm still working on 10 years later and we're going to get into our very specific things that we've been through and, and how we came out of it and residual effects from it too um but it's okay to feel like something has tainted your life or, or something has brought you down or, or almost changed you, whether it changed you for bad, maybe it changed you for good, maybe in the beginning it was rough and, and then you came out of it or you have relapses of feeling bad and, and feeling better. It's all normal. That's the biggest thing is why we're gonna open up to you guys is for you to understand that whatever you've been through it's normal to feel like you're helpless and you're hopeless and you don't know if you're gonna be able to recover from something and maybe you don't ever fully recover from something yeah. maybe you do have residual things and you shouldn't feel like you're broken you shouldn't feel like you're not deserving of a better life no matter what your circumstances were if you can change take what you went through and, and turn it around and come and out on top it. and you grow through it, um, you become a way more mature person when you go through things. You can kind of tell the difference between somebody that's never been touched by something bad or, or somebody that's been, been through hell and back. Um, but it, it's nobody's business to judge either way. So if I've been through a lot of shit and, and I'm talking to somebody who maybe hasn't gone through something, I'm not going to sit there and downplay their life you know yeah. what i mean so it, it, even like it's different levels too yeah just like what i go through you can look at it too and be like okay well i have a similar situation but this is how i can help you and that's usually what i like to do and i never really judge people on what their hard thing is like theirs could be just like a breakup and yeah. that's like the hardest thing for them but i don't know what their relationship was right. or any of that and mine could be completely different yeah and i don't 
I personally would never want to judge someone off of something that makes them yeah be change. In our minds, our, our minds are crazy things that control us way more than we're conscious of. So going through something very traumatic, maybe your traumatic thing is a breakup, but somebody who just had like their sibling die in, in a tragic car accident and like that's traumatic to them. So they're trying to make you understand, okay, your breakup is your breakup. At least this person didn't die. At least mm -hmm. you didn't go through this. If you're going to be there for somebody, you can't, well, at least you didn't have to deal with this. It, everybody's baggage and everybody's experiences are their own. And, and yet you can feel kind of slighted by people who throw themselves a pity party when it, in the grand scheme of things, what they're complaining about isn't massive. But again, in, in their life perspective, it, it is big to them because they haven't been through something else. Mm -hmm. um, and if it gets to the point where you're talking to those people and how they're complaining to you or they're relaying how they're feeling to you bothers you because you just want them to shut up because they haven't been through what you've been through, just don't have that conversation with that person. And not even that, then that just means that you need to grow as more of a person to right. be able to be open to listen to people. Like right. I understand there's also boundaries where it's, you may be having a bad day and you're hearing some like something negative or something that someone went through that you don't relate to. And you may just be looking at it like, oh my God, they're just complaining about the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But realistically, like maybe you're just a good ear for them to like listen to. Yeah. But you are having that bad day. Like there's, I'm the, like I said previously, I'm a friend that people always call and talk to me about or even complain about something and I, I like to be that person but there's days where I'm going through my own personal things of things that I'm still trying to overcome and deal with that I'll say listen I love and care about you but I'm having a day myself right. and maybe it's not the best for me to give you advice right now because I don't think I'm going to give you a clear head right now or right. I'm going to give you the best advice or love that you need to help you with the situation. But as long as you always show someone like, hey, I'm, I'm there for you, but keep that boundary up too yeah. if you need those days. But yeah. don't make somebody feel bad because you really never know what they're going through. Because if you say that, you really don't know what their mental state's at. Yeah. Or you could say that to them and you turn them away and then they're feeling really shitty about themselves. And they yeah. go home and they're just crying. Like, would you rather that? Yeah. And then not, not feel good about yourself because you're just turning them away when yeah. they're confiding in you. I think that's a good thing that you brought up is just being okay with telling somebody that's Again, if they're going to you to try to get help or, or try to feel better, but you're not okay, and then taking on their stress or not being able to help them adds to your stress, having that kind of, I understand that you're going through something, but like you said, I'm not in the right mental space to help you, and I don't want to make your mental space mm -hmm. worse. So everyone always says misery loves its company, but sometimes misery loving its company has a, a hard line as to, are you guys being productively miserable together yeah. or are you making each other feel worse yeah uh, so there's always kind of that gauge as to yeah you have your go-to people to talk to and I know for me I take on a lot of what other people feel yeah I always have and, and like a lot of my family members think it's not a fault to me but it it messes with my head mm -hmm. because I'm trying I'm worried about everybody else yes. and a lot of us do this a lot of us are so worried about taking care of everybody else that we don't take care of our ourselves properly because it's easier for us to help other people and to hold back our emotions and then I know for me when my emotions finally do come out it's like a tsunami oh, yeah. meets an earthquake meets the end of the world yeah. and people are have no idea how to help me mm -hmm. because when you're that strong person for people and people kind of look for you when you break down, nobody knows how to help yep. because it's like, what the fuck just happened? That's literally yeah, two same. seconds. So for, for me, again, we're going to get into kind of what we've been through and I'm a pretty private person. Not a lot of people know any of these things that I'm about to talk about, which it's, it's kind of special to share with you guys because that's what this is all about is making people understand you're not alone and don't judge people just by off of how you see them going a lot of people see like my life in that I travel and I love my job and I love doing jujitsu and I'm always happy and I'm always motivated and things like that but what you don't see is when I'm by myself and when I go and deal with like my own demons 
it, it's hard to always hold it together and yeah. you don't always have to hold it together. Um, but taking your, I'll say recovery journey is going to be very different. So for me, I'm very to the point. You can't give me soft, like everything is going to be okay. Like I don't work that way. And you actually bother me more yeah. if you try to be soft with me. If I'm having a bad day, I don't want you to talk to me. Yeah. I just, if you're going to be by me, I just want you to sit with me mm -hmm. and I don't want you to try to butter me up and tell me everything's going to be okay. I'd rather just have this. like an ear, like just let me vent yeah, what I want and just, just sit vent. there. Don't try to give yeah. me advice because no matter what somebody says to me, you're not going to just like click something into my head. Like I'm not a, I'm not a good go to kind of like a counselor or see whatever. Cause I know in my head the common sense of it all. I understand it, but that's not going to change how I'm feeling kind of thing. So that's how, um, kind of I handle things. And the first, I'll say the first life changing event that I went through pretty much is what I think it, it hit me so hard and changed not like the makeup of my personality, but definitely changed the makeup of how I am with other people in relationships, whether it be friendships, a boyfriend, things like that. When I was in high school, I was dating this guy as a senior in high school, and then I, I went to college, obviously. Um, we stayed together for a bit, and then probably my sophomore year, we decided to kind of like, all right, well, we're going to take a break from this. Um, I, I was living five hours away. Yeah. So then when I would come back, like we, we would get back together and, and things like that. And my sophomore, um, my sophomore year of college, I got a message telling me that my boyfriend was murdered and it was the craziest, I think, thing that I've ever had to deal with. Again, I'll, I'll talk about another one later, but this one, since I was so young, I'll say, um, this one was really the first hit. Like I had like, I had breakups, I had bad breakups, or I had like a grandmother or a grandfather pass away, but like those are things you expect. You don't expect to hear that at the time, like the love of your life was murdered. Yeah. And it's not even like, oh, he was in a car accident, whatever. Somebody took his life. And I remember being in my dorm room, getting the message, not understanding it. Almost like you're in a horrible nightmare and there's like someone who you, you can't intake it. You're, mm -hmm. What are you talking about? I just spoke to them, whatever ago. And then you go through everything in your mind and like talking to his parents talking to his, his good friends and fully in taking in what the fuck just happened. And in your head, everything just changes. Everything that you thought was going to be your future or thought was going to be with this person, you never expect somebody to just be ripped out from under you. Mm -hmm. You like have all of these plans with this person and then it, it's just gone. And I know a lot of people have like significant others who pass away, whether it's sickness or just out of nowhere, um, things you expect, things you don't expect. This was just completely out of the blue. And, and it, it just was so strange to hear that somebody murdered somebody that why, why did that happen? And without going into like crazy details about it, because this whole crazy story about it, you just think about how other people don't value other people's lives and it doesn't make sense to you. Mm -hmm. And you try to make every sort of sense out of anything and it doesn't happen. And I remember being there and my roommate at the time, she's the sweetest human being in the world, love her to death. But again, I already spoke about how I kind of deal with yeah. things and she is that bubbly, like, like rainbows and butterflies person. And she tried to sit there with me and kind of calm me down over it that like, even though he's gone, he's always gonna be with you. And, and like, like that, in that moment you probably were like, I, I can't. And, yeah, here. and that doesn't, that doesn't work with me. It, yeah. It's not a, they're always gonna be with you. I'm like, they're not here on this planet. And that's another thing that you take with a loss is 
it's not like we broke up and, and he was living somewhere else and I just wasn't seeing him anymore, but he was still out in the world somewhere, living his life, doing great things that he was supposed to do. He is nowhere. He is never coming back. You're never going to see him again. And you talk about, I knew that this was going to happen. <laughs> Um, we knew that this was going to happen coming yeah. into it. There's barely any way come on. We were going to have tissues. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just a big hit to you that you lose this important person to you no matter the fights that you went through or no matter the ups and downs that you had with them. You never expect somebody just to be taken from you. Yeah. That there's no potential anymore to get married or, or be with this person later on. Um, but again, like when you're, year, when you're, when you're, when you're younger and, and who knows if me yeah. and him would even be together like now, or if we just would have stayed broken up, but it, it doesn't matter at that point, you go through this ripping out of an important person from you that you expect something to be with and it's, it's not there anymore. So then through college, I was a mess. I was, and I thank God all the time for my friends that I met there, my teammates that I had there because they supported me so much. Like, never thought I was like, over the top emotional about anything because, again, I keep things to myself. But if I would have a breakdown, they, they like, would be oh, like, right, they would be yeah. like very supportive to the point where, <laughs> thanks, Richard. <for, laughs> they would be very supportive. And, um, and it's, it, you can't be strong all the time and that's something like people tell me too is like you can't you, you you can't just like have have it together all the time all the time like there has to be times where you're breaking down and honestly like when I cry I'm like oh this is like such a relief like I need this like you need yeah. to let out the emotions yeah. like you need to feel yeah what you're dealing with so when you were going through all this what do you feel like helped you really turn around from that dark place of where you were. So when I was, again, when I was in college, if I would go out, I would get drunk. And I had very weird years in college where a lot of people who met me probably felt like that was me, but it, it wasn't, I was just a mess. Yeah. And like, I still, I still did good in school. I still enjoyed my friends. I still played field hockey my entire time there. Um, but when I would go out or when I would have, we always used to call them like Kevin days. My ex's name is Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, when I would have those days, it would just be very isolating. So I wouldn't want to be at the party anymore. So yeah. I would be there, I would get drunk, but I would get very internalized and just in my own mind. And my roommate used to, literally, she's a fucking godsend. Um, she would know. She just had like that like radar on her about me that if she couldn't find me, and she knew it was like that kind of mood, that kind of day, she knew that I went somewhere. It's not that I would go like wandering around mm -hmm. town, but I would literally leave. I used to have anger management when I was younger. I would leave the party and I would just start punching the sides of houses. And like that was how I could release my anger because it wasn't just me being sad, it was me being so fucking irate that this human being took this life away from so many people who cared so much about him and it was just a lot of emotions that i was like i can't i can't do anything i can't go find this guy put my hands on this guy like it, nothing none of that would even bring him back but it was the only way that i could get my energy out and just going through trying to even date people after mm -hmm. this happened was not a thing i didn't have a boyfriend pretty much throughout all my college years, I had a boyfriend for maybe like two months and I was like, it's not, it's not it. I would have very weird situations where if I was trying to see somebody, I couldn't stop thinking about Kevin and almost feeling guilty for moving, moving on. on. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people deal with guilt when they lose somebody. It's like, what could I have done? Or would this person want me to be doing this right now? Is this person looking down on me, if you believe in that, and being disappointed in me? So you take on a lot of what is he thinking, what could I have done different, if I would have been with him there, if I would have called him here rather than waiting to talk to him, would he still be alive? Like You go through all of these crazy fucking scenarios and questions and what could I have done, why is this happening? 
and then you it's hard for you to move on with your life in general because you're like you're standing still wanting this person to show back up and I think the hardest thing about it was if I would go to sleep I would have dreams about him and I would have dreams about him that he he wasn't dead he was just for whatever reason he had to go in hiding and that he would come back and then I would wake up and think that he was still alive and then relive the fact that he had yeah. died all over again and these happened multiple times and it would be such a high I would wake up and I'm like oh my god he's alive I'm gonna yeah. call him. and then reliving the fact that no he's not and that took years to figure out and then like you just asked me what got me out of it it wasn't any talking to a counselor talking to a counselor made it worse for me she was just fucking dumb um, but again, like it, you have to see the right person, you, you have to find the right person to help you. Um, or you just have to realize like, it's going to take time and, I and it's okay that it's going to, it's going it, to, it took me all of college, all yeah. of college. And even still now, how we talked about residual things, I still, to this day, like, especially this month, um, August is a bad month cause August is a month that he passed away yeah. for whatever reason, things just like revamp up for me of course. and I have like very bad days where I'll just like break down for absolutely no reason and you again you think about everything that everybody else in the world has been through and you're like why why can't I fully move on from this why can't I fully get rid of these emotions and it's because and I know it, I don't take care of my emotions correctly mm -hmm. and that's why this this has still stuck to me for so long whereas if you think about it it's like why can't I move on? Meanwhile, and I know that they're not moved on. I, I still talk to his family um, to this day, and I know that they still are going through it because y you lost a son, you lost a brother. Um, but if they're kind of going about theirs, why can't I go about mine? But again, you don't know. Like maybe they. Uh, it's just it's you. You fuck your mind up so much because mm -hmm. you don't want to be. You don't want to be labeled depressed you don't want to be labeled and I think that's a, a big thing nowadays is people are so concerned with not wanting to seem weak or not wanting to seem damaged because like and, yeah yeah and I feel like people are so concerned with well, what will people think if like I have an emotional day like oh my and God. it shouldn't be like that because every single person goes through something yeah. that is traumatizing to them and that changes them entirely in yeah. their mindset on things yeah and it, we always speak about like being honest with people and what you've been through and it's always something that i bring up to people that i start seriously seeing that like i had an ex who was murdered and talking about that's why i treat people the way i treat people now is i used to not be a like a mushy person mm -hmm. like i barely any kind of like sweet talking to people. I never told anyone like besides him for a while, like that I loved them. Like I was, I'm just not like that kind of emotional, like, like affectionate person. Once he passed away, I, I have, I, it, I have to make sure people know how I feel about them. And, and it's not like right off the bat. I'm like, Oh my God, I like you so much. Oh, all yeah. all this stuff. Like, it's just like, it's okay to let yourself be vulnerable. Yeah. And, share how you feel about someone because at the end of the day like life is so short that yeah, you just you don't you, you don't just want to make sure that you, everything you feel about someone is yeah there is, is out the there table. and they know it and there's nothing that you're holding back from letting this person know and it's it's not about playing games it's not about being tough anymore and again i used to never cry over anything and now if i watch a movie it's so fucking bad now if i watch a movie and, and somebody's love of their life or somebody some, who they love dies or gets taken from them. I'm a mess. When I watched that movie Southpaw, um, oh, and the, the, the wife gets oh, like killed in it, gosh. she gets killed in it in the like, first like 30 minutes of it. I cried for the rest of the movie yeah. and then for another hour after the movie was over with because it's just such a sad thing to think about somebody that you care so much about just gets taken from you and then your whole life gets changed around. and. And taking myself, again, we just moved away from talking about taking myself out of it. It just took a lot of years and a lot of self- And it's going to be something they're always still going to yeah. deal with, but 
I, I truly believe that when people go through really thing like hard things like that too, how much you help other people. Yeah. Like when I had a day where I texted, I was like, listen, I'm not going to be myself today. Yeah. And you were there for me. And then you opened up to me about what you went through. And I was just like, this is why you're in my life too, because I don't know how to handle it yeah. still. And, and pe it's okay to not know how to handle something. It's okay to not know right away how to get a grasp of something. But just know that it's going to take time for you to evolve from something traumatic that has happened to you. Again, everybody's level is different. Everybody's psychological level is going to be affected by it differently. If you need to go talk to somebody and, and you're so like, I was always that person that's so against like, I don't need a therapist. I don't need yeah. to talk to this. So many people, especially now once this whole quarantine thing happened and everyone's lives turned around, everyone's mental health and relapsing is absurdly like skyrocketed yeah um it's okay to get help and it's okay to if that person's not helping you find the next person yeah you have to find what fits with you that's going to help you get better whether it's you just need your own self-reflection uh i wrote in a journal for a very long time i love journaling i wrote in a journal for a very long time um and i just allowed myself to have that emotional release and now i'm a much better person um because I've matured from what I went through and it's just again you, you feel bad moving on from something because you're like I never want to I never want to forget him I never want his memory to be forgotten um but you also have to know that you have to live your life yeah because again just talking from my experience what I went through was somebody passing away but again other people go through different things you go through Maybe you got sick and you got through that, or maybe somebody else got sick and, and they passed away, or you had a very, you were abducted, you were taken, like any, anything is, is traumatic to you. But if you can kind of get a grasp of it, again, when you're in it, you're engulfed in it, you're like, yeah. this is never fucking gonna, it gonna change. It took me years and it's okay to have that journey of, it's not going to be all right right away and you're not going to be okay right away. But as long as you're finding a healthy path to kind of get yourself out of it. And sometimes it takes people hitting absolute rock bottom. It took me hitting an absolute scary point that I like scared myself. I remember I was in college and I had a Kevin day and I was wasted and I pretty much barricaded myself into my bedroom and I was just like, this is it. Like I can't mentally come out of this and it's just not worth it for me anymore. And I've definitely, this is the first time I've ever seen this out loud. I've definitely thought about like just ending it. Yeah. And, and you get to such a dark place and you get to such a dark place that you scare yourself out of it. And you're like, and you're just like, no, why, like, why would I do fuck? that? No, why mm -hmm. would I do that? Why would I do the same thing that just happened to me to all of these other people? Like you, you, you have to know that even if people aren't interacting with every day that people give a fuck about you yeah. And, and you just have to get out of your own head and out of your own dark place to realize that you have to get a grasp of what's going on. Um, and it's going to be with you forever, but if you can turn it into something that's beneficial to you and then help other people go through the same trauma that, that you went through, um, and turn it into again, a positive light, then, Again, it, it sucks that you go through something, but how you turn it around says everything about mm -hmm. it. And again, the, the person that I am now, I'm way more open to like emotion and stuff like that. Like I tell the guys every time we pass, I'm like, love you, love you, yeah. love you. Like you'll always know how I feel about you now. And that's a, that's a big thing that came out of it was kind of letting that guard down and not being such a tough guy mm -hmm. anymore. And crying at movies and crying yeah. and all these different things. And just really learning how to feel the emotions and yeah. all that. Yeah, when I uh, I was working when I was working at the old salon, it was like a couple years ago. I just had really shitty year, and I feel like I could speak on a lot of people in Saddlebrook because Saddlebrook alone just had a year of losing a lot of like young people, and uh, um, some some of those people were loved ones of people that I really cared about and I was close to so I kind of feel like I'm like an empath so I can feel people's emotions yeah. it sounds really weird I don't yeah. know if anyone else experiences this too but I just felt for them too and I was just in such a, like I started to just get in a dark place because it was like one and then like a couple months later another and another and 
Uh, the last one was a good friend of mine who I went to school with since like kindergarten and he honestly was like a light to me. Every time I knew he was around, I have always felt comfortable being around people and I was such like a, not an awkward person, but like just so to myself and I just always assumed people didn't like me because mm -hmm. I was like, I just feel like girls don't like me yeah. and all that and he was always just that person to be there for me and be like, people like you, like we, we love you around, like we want you around, like who cares about anyone else? Right. And he really helped me get over like my social anxiety and when I found out he passed away, I was just lost and I was work when I was working at the salon everyone around me knew they were like you're really going through because I'm a very bubbly person yeah. and I was miserable every day I would hide in the bathroom and cry and I was just like why is this happening why is this happening why are all these people like passing away yeah. I don't understand yeah. like and I was just at a place where I was just like uh, these are young good people and yeah. I care about their family why would they even have to go through any of this and I'd be like like why would God do this to someone and I was working with someone who was a Christian and she was like Courtland I'm telling you like God's doing this for a reason he's gonna build you I'm like I don't understand what this reason is like yeah. please I'm like and I would get angry yeah and I would just get so mad and one of my really really good friends also after that last um after losing my friend found out she had cancer and I was like okay and it got to I got to a point where I was like what the fuck else is next yeah. what else is next yeah tell me like seriously like I'm, I'm so over it and I was in such a dark place and I remember sitting down outside and I was just crying to myself at on like a lunch break and my coworker comes over to me and she's like you really should go talk to someone I was like I don't want to talk to someone because yeah. any person I've talked to like they don't understand and I'm the type of person like when someone comes to me I try to understand I may not feel the emotions but I try to understand and she was just like can you just try to come to church and I was like I haven't been to church in like since like Christmas yeah. like I I don't really I don't understand if you read the Bible verse to me I don't get it she goes yeah but you're going to a different church like please just try mine and I'm like you know what what nothing I, I, nothing's gonna hurt me at this point so yeah. I'll try so that Sunday I remember I went and she's like if you're if you're not okay I'm here for you like just now I was like you know what thank you like you you keep coming and checking in on me and you keep sending me verses and I don't even know what they are yeah. but sure I'm gonna come for you and whatever and I remember I felt like a chill through my body and what the message was that day was just everything I possibly related to and it was just like you may not understand why things are happening to you and that it's going to make you stronger and you're going to benefit other people and all that. And since then, I really honestly turned myself around and I became more of like a spiritual person mm -hmm. and understanding God. And, yeah. you know, I, I pray a lot now and it actually helped me. I'm like, okay, stop focusing on how you're feeling and be the person that I know I am and be there for others. So I make sure to connect more so with the family members of the people. Yeah that had the losses and now I'm very even closer to them and I almost feel like I'm closer to those people and my friend that passed away um his mom I actually was just talking to earlier she's always like I feel like you know when I need to talk to you and I feel like since I started going to church more and really just connecting and being okay with my feelings and being okay with crying and getting vulnerable and ha I actually have this one friend that I always go to all the time every time I have these emotions mm -hmm. or emotional days where they just sit there and they're like do you need to vent or do you need advice and I'm like I don't need advice I just need someone to sit there and hold me and just say yeah. it's gonna be fine or just let me cry yeah. like that's it and it really like that helped me too like there was one day actually like two months ago where I kind of was going through because it was like the anniversary of his passing and it was like 12 in the morning and I called my friend up and I was like are you around he's like, I'm like two hours away, like I'm down the shore. And I, I barely cry too, but when I cry, it's usually about the situation. Yeah. And I just bawled and I couldn't even breathe. And he was like, I haven't heard you cry like this in a very long time. Are you okay? And I'm like, no, like I'm not. And he's like, I'm, I'm coming to your house. Like it's, it's okay. Like I'm, yeah. I'm coming to your house just to make sure that you're okay. And he drove two and a half hours just to make sure I was okay. And it, having friends like that that I know I can always go to or even being close with his family that I could go to their house and just feel connected to him somehow yeah. really helps me and that besides going to like I didn't even try to go to therapy because I personally I don't want to have to sit there for an hour and explain all of my things that I went through I'd rather just kind of go to people that I know I could trust yeah. that know me as a person so that they can help me and honestly just sitting there and I've watched like sermons and just and I feel like that really helped me kind of get out of it. Yeah. 
And I know that, um, again, Courtney's saying that she went to church, things like that. I'm not like a very religious yeah. person. I'm not that much of a spiritual person. I probably would benefit better from it. But um, I know that I've had like weird experiences when it comes to like heaven and, and different things. Um, I remember one time I was trying to like see this guy and he was like rubbing my back and I have a tattoo on my back um, in memory like of Kevin mm -hmm. on the bottom of it it has like a like a, a part of a poem that he wrote me he used to write me poems all the time um, so it's like memory thing and then uh, his poem excerpt on the bottom of it and this guy it was we were laying down and he was just like rubbing my back and, and out of nowhere he kind of just like rubbed his hand over my tattoo and I had this weird like body takeover mm -hmm. thing and then he ended up turning into like he was Kevin and that it was Kevin that was with me and not him and that fucked me up so it, it, it very weird things that like take over yeah. you because things are connected to that person and or, or, or these things but Again, you you feel weird. Like yeah. I feel so. It's, and you can't even weird. explain it, but it's just like a weird feeling inside your stomach. Like almost like when you really like someone, you get yeah. butterflies, but different. Yeah. And when I had that church experience, I remember they had like a the pastor was like at the front. Was like I feel like there's someone in here that like needs to come to the altar and like. <laughs> Did whatever, you and I'm like, like what is up? happening? You, was your body? I'm like, what is like, it? Uh, no, there's not. Me. I don't, and I never understood, like, because I never went to a Christian church yeah. before, so I was like, what is this? And there was a lot of people that went to the front, and, like, the, whoever was, like, in, like, the youth group or, like, anything there would just go up and just pray over you, and I was like, all right, what do I have to lose? Like, I want to I know, what, like, what is this? Yeah. Like, I, I know I need, I need an extra prayer, and, like, they kind of just, like, give you, like, an extra yeah. prayer or whatever, and, like, I never got it, because I, I mean, I always believed in a God and, like, all that, but I never, I never sat there and read the Bible. Yeah. I just kind of was like... All right, I pray at night for like my friends, family, and everyone around yeah. me. I really, honestly, don't pray for myself. Yeah. I, if I pray for myself, I kind of pray for like guidance in yeah. some area that I really need. So I was like, okay. I went up, and he was just like, "You're experiencing a loss right now. That's really taking a toll on you." And yeah. like all this stuff. And I've heard him talking to other people, yeah. and it, it was not like not a generic thing. And I was just like, "What is?" This? And I remember like I just had tears just coming out of my eyes. Like, what? Well, I didn't even know they were coming. Like I wasn't crying yeah. at that point. Tears were just flying out of my eyes. And I just had like a whole chill on my body. I'm like, this is wild. And then as soon as I left, I'm pretty sure I texted his mom. And I was just like, hey, like I just went to church for the first time. And like, this is what I've experienced and like whatever. And she goes, how did you know that I needed to talk to you right now? Like I was having a day myself. And I was like, I'm telling you, like I just knew. And since that day, it's been like an ongoing thing yeah. where I would text her. I'd have dreams. I'd be like, does this relate to you somehow? Yeah. And she's like, yes. Like what? And it's, it's wild. Yeah. And I just, I feel him around sometimes. Yeah. And when I get these like w random dreams or, mm -hmm. or the person that I'm with, he, again, I, I feel this is why I don't express it is because it makes me feel weird because you can't explain it and you don't want it to be happening. Like I don't want to be, ten, this is 10 years ago that he mm -hmm. passed away and I'm still having these residual things where if I get overwhelmed or if the person I'm seeing kind of has like very high emotions and I'm making them feel bad, then I break down because I don't want somebody feeling bad. I don't want, like it's all this like heavy baggage that you just hold on to you after something like this happens and, and you don't have any answers to it and you're never gonna have answers yeah. to some things. And that's something that you have to accept is you're never gonna know why something happened or you're never, there's not a clear answer is how am I, how am I gonna get through this? And at the same time, you feel weird because I don't wanna, try to be in another relationship and maybe this is another reason why I stay out of them it's because yeah. I don't want to show this weird vulnerable side to me that if I'm dating a guy and he's somebody that I, I really care about and that I like and he he cares about me and I have a breakdown about my ex who died 10 years ago why is this shit still happening and that's something that I go through a lot is that I don't want somebody to see me breaking down and then they're like, what's wrong? I can't be like nothing. I, I'm just fucking bipolar and depressed and all this <laughs> stuff. Meanwhile, the response is I'm just having a very weird reaction to this and it's bringing me back to this and it's something that I can't separate. So it makes me feel weird. It does make yeah. you feel damaged or broken or that you're never going to be the same again. But 
it, it's okay to feel that vulnerability and that something something happened to you and you have to be yeah. okay with the fact that yeah nobody else is ever going to know what you're feeling mm -hmm. and people can try and help you um but ultimately holding holding on to okay this is something that happened to me it's not who i am it is something that is affecting me on a not a regular daily basis, but it does pop up. It's going to. And you're gonna learn how you can get better. In the beginning, you're gonna be a hot mess. Yeah. In the beginning, after something traumatic, you're a fucking mess. You can excuse, it's like having a 2020 year fucking for yeah. you specifically. You're gonna be a mess. And you have to take oh, that right. on yeah. and not get into, again, a, when you're in it and you're engulfed in it, you're just like, fuck, I'm never, I'm never gonna figure this out. Yeah. And you might not ever fully figure it out. Yeah, you might have these mine, residual mine things. Mine was two years ago, and I'm still dealing with it. Mine was ten years yeah, ago, and, and I'm you're still, still a fucking sobbing mess. I just cried. Yeah, you just had to give me this fucking piece of paper. But it, it, and I feel like too, when you have yourself around like the positive people, or even if you date someone and they understand it, they're gonna sit there with you. Yeah. Throughout all the situations. Like I have friends that are like, You didn't date the kid, why are you so upset? Or they're not your family member, why are you so upset? I and I'm like, But you don't understand that. I have people where I like even now going to funerals, I still cry a yeah. lot. And they can be like distant, distant, distance, yeah. and I'm still crying about it because I just relive it in my head over and over again. And even just today I'm sure I'm gonna go home and cry yeah. about it. I hate when people like downplay your emotion. Okay, right. I'm not his immediate family. I mm -hmm. was like a girlfriend and we were very young and who knows what the future would even been. It, it doesn't, it doesn't anything, matter. You it, shouldn't yeah. question people. Well, why are you feeling bad? You're not this or you're not this. It's, it's, it's stop. If yeah. you're going to ask and me those like, questions, you're not don't in even my body. That question. And it's like, you're not in my body. And you don't know how I handle things. You don't know what has been in my life with these people yeah you know and, it, and like i said for our whole town it was a very shitty year yeah. and to see what made me happy to see our community come together and yeah. do things for the family is what made me so happy yeah. of just being like wow like we're all really like being there but i also look at it too like i want to be that person that's not just going to be there for a couple months of you know, dealing with that. I want to be that person that I'm here long term. Yeah. And I remember at the funeral, I just kept going up to his parents and family. And I was just like, I love you guys. Like, I I'm here for you guys long haul. I'm always going to check in. I'm probably going to be annoying because of how much I'm going to check in. Yeah. And on the anniversary, I actually, we filmed the podcast. And that was when I talked to you about everything. And I actually afterwards went, bought flowers and a balloon. And I went to their house and I was just making sure I was there for her and the family and just, that's how I like to cope with it because if, if I can't deal with it on my own to make someone else just smile and be happy is because that's the type of person I know he was, yeah. that that's all I want to be. Yeah. And I know it, it's hard nowadays because a lot of people like to play victim to mm -hmm. things. So it's almost hard to have, to feel okay having genuine feelings about something. Mm -hmm. So like we said earlier in grand scheme of things, maybe my ex being murdered isn't, isn't a big deal to somebody else who's been through something like way more yeah. directly affecting and that's fine. But it, your brain is your brain and your chemical imbalance. Like I was saying, that's where also like, is fucked. like our situations are different, but the emotions that we both have gone through yeah. are, are right. not similar because I didn't experience what you dealt yeah. with, but it wouldn't change how much I'd be there for you versus how yeah. much you'd be there for me. And the people that like you said, downplay your situation because they think in their head theirs is way worse are the people that still need to deal with it and yeah. open up their, themselves and be vulnerable and be like, listen, like we may not have the same experiences, but what can I help you with that you're still dealing with? Yeah. Or there's someone that hasn't experienced it yet. So, so they can't understand because yeah. they've never had that like emotional impact of anything. But nowadays everybody wants to be like a part of something say so everything that's going on with with corona and this or this and you see families who have family members who have passed away from corona but then you see other people who maybe aren't affected by it but they want to play a victim as well and that's what this victim mentality has been going on a lot in like nowadays especially it's people want to be a part of something even though it isn't affecting them and because that's why they just want to kind of be right, relevant. they just they just want to be relevant and it sucks because when people are actually going through it and are going through like emotional thing about it, 
it kind of takes away from like this is seriously impacting people but ever other people want to complain about like smaller things and again it's all what people are going through and everyone's just emotional and a mess right now yeah. and it's it's all right when you go through something that hard to be emotional so another thing that i've been through is like about four or five years ago my dad was diagnosed with early onset alzheimer's and he got diagnosed with it at the age of like 49 which is super young but it's mm -hmm. happening more and more now and I remember the first day that we knew something was totally wrong. I was standing there in the kitchen and he came up to me and he just was like freaking out. Oh, they're here. Who is here? Like, the people are outside to get me. I was like, fuck. I like called my mom over. I'm like, we had seen him start to kind of forget things and do all these different things. But then he started hallucinating and then he started like, just randomly having outbursts or whatever. He stopped being able to feed himself. He stopped going to the bathroom in the bathroom and he became fully dependent. And then like a year into it, he just stopped speaking altogether with. Mm -hmm. So he's still alive, but I haven't spoken to my dad in probably four years because this awful disease mm -hmm. came out of nowhere. It's like nowhere in our family, but it just like blindsides you again. And you go from having like this sweet man who was so supportive of me like my whole life and now he is like a, a zombie. And it's not even happening to you, like it's happening to him. Like he is not aware of anything that's happening anymore. And sometimes you think like, oh, he's not aware, it's not that bad for him. But this is a person who was a bass master, like fisherman, he worked out, he did everything around the house. He went to work, he like took care of everybody. And now he's just a zombie. Mm -hmm. And you think again that your parents are gonna be with you like, you're, he's going to walk you down the aisle. My dad is not walking me down the aisle. That's just the truth of the future of it, is that my dad is not where my dad cannot function anymore. And it was just another huge hit. And the, the, the first year, he was kind of, like, aware of what was going on. And then he started, like, losing it more and more. And I remember one day we were in his bedroom, and I went to get him because I was going to take him to the gym with me so he could just be out of the house. And he just hugged me and he just was sobbing, hysterically crying, someone that I've never seen cry before, um, sobbing and apologizing to me that he was sick and apologizing to me that he couldn't provide for us anymore and that he was, he couldn't do anything. And like, as, as a man, as a dad, you having that feeling as being one of the last things that you can consciously think about is how you're letting your family down, even though it has nothing to do yeah. with you. Like you got sick and you feel bad for us. And then like, he's not there anymore. You can't talk to him anymore. He's not gonna meet any more of your boyfriends trying to intimidate like who you're gonna marry one day. Yeah. Like see like your kids, his grandkids, anything like that. So. That was like another big thing that happened to us was that when my dad pretty much just stopped being a person, then you watch it happen and it's so sad to see. Because you just have no control over it. And no, it's, then neither do they. And yeah. again, him feeling so bad, but it's happening to him and then yeah. him still feeling bad for us that he wasn't going to be able to be there for us anymore and acknowledging that and then out of nowhere waking up one day and not talking, not knowing who anybody is. It was just like something, like another thing big for us. So when all these different things happen and one after the other, you just kind of learn how to cope. Yeah. And then, but again, you start to like, like I said, you're just kind of, you get to a point where you sit back and you're like, well, what's going to happen next? I'm yeah. already in this dark place. Yeah. What's going to happen next? Yeah. But what I've realized too, and like, I see this in you too, like you're so strong of a person and you're so caring of a person like me and you at this point when I was dealing a couple months ago I mean we've only like hung out doing the podcast yeah. and like we text pretty much every day but like you made sure to check in on me and make sure I was okay and some people that knew I was very bad didn't even check in on yeah. me to make sure I was okay yeah so for you to even do that it just shows the type of person that you are and the type of person you've become and how strong of a person you become and how you're always going to be there for everybody and how it's admiring to me too to sit here and hear you talk about all these things and still be such a light when you walk into the door yeah. and you know like everyone's like oh Jess is here yeah like like we, everyone loves you you know instead of just 
you know, looking at it like a pity party of, yeah. like, this is what I'm dealing with. Like, you're, like, yeah. always just, it's going to be better. It's going to be okay. You're going to have your bad days. Like, go through your bad days. You're going to grow through it. Yeah. And and I think that that's why me and Courtney wanted to kind of have this kind of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> because... <laughs> It's, it's not all rainbows and butterflies yeah. and I can be the most motivational person out there and, and want the world for everybody else and motivate everybody and else. there's days where like, you're going to be like, yeah, everyone like leave me alone. Like, yeah. Even the other day we were both like, yeah, we're both in a mood. Like, let's yeah. rediscuss this. Like <laughs> not tomorrow, concerned. like, yeah, we're both kind of going through it. Yeah. But we wanted to talk about it to like normalize to you guys that walking around and seeing how happy everybody is on, mm-hmm. on a day-to-day thing and especially like a, on Instagram like uh, people yeah, see all me all the time they're like oh you 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 deal with things and I'm like yeah, yes I, it's great. so easy yeah. for me to take 30 pictures of myself and like one yeah. that I'm smiling but you don't know how I'm feeling yeah. the next day the day before yeah. like so you can't always judge a book by its cover and, yeah. and, uh, and I love the fact that I kind of give off the I have my shit together and I like not emotional but yeah I, to be honest, this is why we're coming out with this. I've never had this conversation with really anybody yeah. before, but letting you guys know that everybody is a mess in their own way and it's okay. It's just how you learn how to control it and learn how to project better emotions rather than again, getting into a very, very dark place and never picking yourself out of it. And again, kind of listing. I know a lot of people get into the bad habit of like, oh, well, like you said, like, this is happening and this so, is happening. Yeah. What else is going to happen? And then happen? also kind of like that, that kind of comes into play with like manifesting yeah. too, because when you constantly are just like something bad's going to happen, like whatever it took my friend that drove from down the shore to be there for me, it took him being like, you need to stop thinking something bad's going to happen all yeah. the time because the good thing is going to happen. I'm telling you, you're going through this for yeah. something, like yeah. something good's going to happen. And then somehow it just kind of turned around where I was like, you're right. Like I need someone to yell at me and like not be, not be afraid when I'm, sitting here crying and like be afraid to like really tell me how it is and then you really just kind of I just sat there one day and I was like okay I have to I have to figure something out and then I just really kind of I would sit in my room and just like either listen to music or you know I've even then that's when I actually found here and then just even being around here and everyone here really finding an outlet yeah and like every time I need to get out either go for a walk in like Edgewater Weehawken area or I come here and just even hanging out with everybody and just being around such positive people really helps you and realizing that it's okay to not be okay all the time yeah. and it's okay like because I always feel bad when I express my emotions of like what I'm dealing with because I don't like people to like make me feel like I'm being like oh feel bad for me because yeah, I don't yeah. like that yeah. I don't I don't like feeling like that yeah so I, I hate putting my negativity on other people, yeah. but then I realize like it's okay. Yeah. Like what we all go through is different. And you have, and you know the people at this point who ex- accept you for yeah. it. Like I know, like again, I have people who know about the certain days that I have, yeah. and they're fully accepting it and okay with letting me let it out. Yeah. Um. And, and half the time you're less okay with letting it out than yeah. that person is for intercepting it, and you kind of get to learn those people, or even having a place where you like to go and be peaceful like I have three different places that are in the woods somewhere or by water somewhere yeah. there I'll just go and sit and you kind of have that clear head to just like think about different things and, and move things out and, and instead of constantly because like you said about bad things happening and you think that bad things are always going to happen stopping for me thinking that every person I date is gonna die yeah. so if there's a movie uh, my mom fucking loves it practical magic where the sisters are witches and they have like a curse so like oh. the any person that they fall in love with dies because their ancestor or something had like a curse put on oh, all wow. men to let whatever so in my head i'm like oh my god i'm cursed like something bad oh. is gonna happen to all of yeah. my whatever but it's like stop making it that big of a like deal like you you take one situation you're like every person i'm ever gonna date is now gonna die it's Take it to fuck easy. Like, yeah. it, it's not going to happen. You went through something, but that doesn't mean that it's going to continuously happen to you over and over again. But, uh, we, we went a very long we time. We went really long, guys, so yeah. we're going to, I know this is a really hard switch, but yeah. we, but we hope that sharing <laughs> our stuff and, you know, getting vulnerable with you guys really does help you guys to even more so look at us as like, you guys can come talk to us and, 
you know, whatever you guys deal with, like, yeah. literally, I'm the friend, too, and you're now the person I go to, yeah. and I'm like, hey, I'm having a bad day, like, am I wrong for feeling like this, yeah. like, whatever, and we're really, honestly, people, and we love to be there for everyone, like, yeah. what we've gone through, we hope to help other people, and hope to help others with emotions, and deal with things, and if you guys just want to vent, we're here, yeah. please. And knowing, Slide that, in the DMs. Yeah, and knowing that however you go through things is okay. Like you might cope differently. You might need somebody there to tell you it's okay and, and, and talk you through it. You might need to just have somebody and sit there with you or yeah. you might need to just be absolutely by yourself. Maybe you do need a therapist. You can't figure it out on your own. Whatever way you figure out how to cope and come out of a dark place is, is fine. But know that there is hope for you and know that just because you are feeling like you're spiraling or, or you're you're like I don't get it I'm not a I'm not a depressed person all of these labels that people like to put on people it doesn't matter at the end of the day we're all humans you're gonna have emotions you're allowed to have your emotions if somebody wants to tell you that you shouldn't be feeling this way in comparison to the rest of the world don't just don't talk to that person it's yeah. perfectly fine However, honestly I learned so many Boundaries, people, and, boundaries and people that really truly don't care and aren't there for me and dealing with those things I cut a lot of people out yeah all right so we're gonna hit you really really quick with fitness and beauty tips <laughs> pull this whole thing around <laughs> Courtney's gonna start with a beauty tip for us um, so I posted already on the beauty games page a facial that I got it's called the dermal infusion facial I go to hand and stone and pumped and Lakes. you could also go in Clifton those are the two that I have a code for it's code glow if you guys want a discount before you guys want to even get it but this facial I get spray tans once a week and obviously spray tins to sit on your skin before you exfoliate i don't like to exfoliate my face that much just because i feel like it's very harsh and my face is sensitive so i do these dermal infusion facials once a month and it literally cleans out your pores so much that you just see all this stuff that sits in there and it's actually really good for like your lymph nodes too okay. and it helps since i started getting them i mean not going wood i haven't gotten like sick <laughs> a lot <laughs> you know? yeah. like in the winter time like i get them literally once a month so uh, seventy percent of it increases the hydration levels of your skin. It exfoliates, extracts, and infuses serum into your skin. So they'll ask you to like, is your skin more dry? My skin gets really dry in my T zone, and then I'm oily everywhere else. So I do like a lot of like hydration. But they'll do like if you're older and you have like more like fine lines, they'll do something for that. Okay. Um, so they have like a couple different options. It helps you achieve smooth as butter, glowing and radiant skin in under 30 minutes. It is super, super quick. I also add, it's called the new face. It's kind of like, it's literally like a facelift pretty much. It, it has like um, electric, like sti like, yeah. like the stim machine kind of, but just for your face. Yeah. And it really like helps boost collagen and all that. There's no downtime. You could even wear makeup the next day, the day of. Yeah. I don't like to, I'll, I'll try to not, not wear makeup or even spray my face for like two, three days. Um, it improves the skin's radiance, plumper, fuller, and brighter skin, and it invisibly reduces fine lines and wrinkles. I will notice that when I go. I also do it in the winter time too. Like my lips get really dry okay. and they go over your lips too. And that actually helps like my lips get plumper. Um, and like I said before, it's pretty customizable. And yeah. then I also do, I'll do that. And then I do dermal planing. So it actually gets rid of like your vellus, like, peach fuzz like on your skin okay. so I'll do that but I don't do it I'll do that like two weeks before and then I'll go do a facial I'll post about that too and all the benefits for that but that's fun it's pretty much like you're shaving your face with a straight razor yeah, yeah. And I feel like uh especially for you at least <laughs> you can correct me if I'm wrong but when you do all these things like makeup is so much easier oh my god like, it's so much easier especially like brides and all that and yeah stuff. like brides and all that I always tell them to like get facials like you know two months before your wedding and all of that and then the um dermal plane derm derma planing there's yeah both like the same mm -hmm. um that i usually say to do it like the same week because it like kind of like just it's like really just smooth yeah application it's amazing yeah I, I find the difference even when i get like my face like wax my yeah. sister loves to wax my fucking I have a mustache apparently, and my sister wants to tell me. I need to get <laughs> my <laughs> 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 But when I get like different 
places on my face besides my eyebrows wax, everything just looks mm -hmm. so much smoother on it. Or I do those little like strippy things mm -hmm. that like pull some of the things out. It's super satisfying. Oh my god, it is so satisfying yeah. to see what comes out of your skin. I sent my it's sister. So great. I, I'll do it and I'll like send a picture of my sister. Oh, I love it. Forest. Like blackheads, popping blackheads or like yeah. pimples. Oh my god. This and is why I went to school for this stuff, guys. <laughs> like I will, oh my god, it's fantastic. Well then that's it. No, it's fine because then we'll just finish on that one and then just redo this yeah, one. True. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I was gonna do a, a longer fitness one, but we've already been going for so long, so I'm gonna hit you with the, the summary of it. What I've been running into talking about recently about fitness is the fact that people get stuck in, in doing the same, the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then they wonder why they either hit a plateau or they're not seeing any more results. Like I'm, I'm still working out, I'm still at a caloric deficit. Your body will get used to what you're doing over a period of time. Okay, so that's why people always use that term like challenge to change so, yeah. kind of thing. Um, if your body is used to doing the same workout over and over again, that's why if you think about working out rather than following a program, a lot of trainers will use the term like workout or exercise is you're just coming in and you're, you're doing a random thing. A program helps you progressively based off of one thing, whether you're increasing time doing something or weight or intensity, different things like that, you progress in your program. Not, e not even talking about programming, in general, if you add in some sort of new like training method, let's say, to your routine, it will switch up your body and your body has to adapt to it. Okay, let's say. So I, I made a post about this the other day. Let's say that you are a, a weightlifter you like to come in and you lift all, all the weights. Your heart kind of gets conditioned to doing that type of activity, right? Mm. So if you're in here and you're doing like sets of one, sets of three, five, your body gets used to doing more of like a strength program, let's say. Now if you go and take somebody out of, let's say, Orange Theory. Orange Theory is high cardio base. You're on a rower, you're on the floor for a little bit with lighter weights, uh, you're on a treadmill. So their whole thing is getting your heart rate super high up. I have people who will come train with me who let's say train at Orange Theory and they have their heart rate monitor thingy on and it says that maybe at an Orange Theory class they're burning however many calories. And, and that, good, great, awesome. Then they come and do like a strength training thing with me and they look and they've burnt all these calories. They're like, how am I burning more calories strength training with you? I go to Orange Theory four times a week for like six months now, mm -hmm. right? But your body is used to doing a cardio-based workout, right? So now I'm bringing you into weights are in your hands. Your heart and your body is not used to outputting that kind of exertion mm -hmm. um, under that stress. So now your heart is heart rate is increasing and your blood flow is going. You're burning mm -hmm. more calories because your body is now adapting to a new training method. So even a lot of people just think about calorie burning is, is running. The more you run or the more you sprint or the more you do like HIIT training or uh, orange theory training, you're, you, that's where you're going to burn the most calories. But after a while, your body is going to get used to that. So then you're not burning as much calories. So if you do kind of a mix program, I'd like to say, where you're strength training, but you're also adding in a few circuits or you're also adding in running, that's where your body is going to benefit the most because you're constantly making your body adapt to doing different things. So even if you think outside of a training program where, yeah, you are supposed to be progressing weights or, or time under tension, anything like that you want to talk about, if you find yourself hitting a plateau, just add in something new. So I've recently started cutting, let's say, and I've been doing more of weightlifting for months now. Um, and now I'm adding in more circuits again and I'm already seeing results from it and I, you could definitely tell, like I do jujitsu and stuff, but adding in the circuit, I'm out of breath within the first round. Mm -hmm. I can lift all the weights in the world and control my breathing and my heart is used to that training. So I would suggest for you guys to start looking at different training methods, um, especially if you're, you're on a weight loss journey and you're kind of getting stuck switch up which energy system or which fibers you're, you're hitting. Um, again, if you don't know how to do that, we talked about it before, reach out to resources and things like that. But if you're finding that you're hitting plateaus or if, even with motivation, change up your training method. Even if it's not the whole program you're training, just add in maybe a cardio day or add in a day or two of strength training yeah. and you'll start to see different results again. You change anything in your routine, nutrition-wise, sleep-wise, anything-wise, you're going to start to see different results from that. So that was just my 
quick generic version of that um, just so that we could get it out of here. We know we talked a lot, got really emotional today, guys. Um, but we just want you to give Jess a huge hug after this. Oh my god, I cried twice in the matter of. Don't worry. Um, I, I'll be minutes. crying later. I can't. If it's yeah. like I get awkward already on like camera, yeah. so I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. But um, just know that whatever you're going through, it, it's okay, guys. However long it takes you to get out of that, or even if it takes you a long time, you're not broken. Maybe you feel damaged. Maybe you feel awkward or vulnerable or less than a person because you can't. You can't get your emotions together. You can't get past something. Every little step you take to feel better or to kind of normalize what you think it is how you're supposed to be, we're always going to be changed by different things. There's no way that you can go through life without being phased by something. Yeah. It, even if you hide it from people, it, it still internally happens. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay to have your bad days and be really happy when you have your good days. Too. Yeah. So just have that support system. Know that even in your darkest times how you turn yourself around and there's oh there's even if I'm ashamed of the per not even ashamed even if I didn't like the person who I was in college now that I've grown out of it and I look back at it yeah I'm like ooh that that was a mm -hmm. rough time in my life but I got out of it and we're going to continue yeah. on from there um but thank you to our sponsors Glow Commando FT Performance Lab No Windy Sleeves yes um, so once you guys are listening to this, it'll be after Labor Day. It'll be September at this yes. time. So hopefully you had a good Labor Day weekend, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.